Hello, my name is Dr. Diwan S. Raja. Today I will discuss about the anatomy of the axilla. What is axilla? What is its definition? Axilla or armpit is a pyramidal space at the junction between the upper part of the medial aspect of the arm and the thorax below the glenohumeral joint and above the axillary fascia. So, we go there. Definition of axilla. Definition. This is a pyramidal space. This is a pyramidal space. At the junction between the upper part of the at the junction between the upper part of the median aspect of the of the arm and the thorax thorax below the glenohumeral joint below the below the glenohumeral joint and above the axillary fascia. So we got the definition. So it is a pyramid. So we go to the boundaries. Okay. We go to the boundaries. Okay. So we got the definition. We we'll go to the boundaries of the axilla is because it is a pyramidal space so it should have an apex base anterior wall posterior wall lateral wall medial wall okay we'll go through the structures forming the apex base anterior wall posterior wall lateral wall and medial wall of the axilla okay apex is not pointed this is truncated okay that means this not pointed okay and apex is directed above and medially towards the root of the neck okay so apex is directed above above and medially above and directed above and medially medially towards the root of the neck root of the neck okay so what structure forms the root the apex of the axilla we have three bones one is scapula the upper border of the scapula this is the scapula this is the upper 
border upper border of the script and part of required process required process okay is one of the boundary of the apex of the exit another boundary by the lateral border of the lateral or we can say outer border of the first rib outer border of the first rib okay here is the first rib okay first rib this is the superior border of the scapula this is the coracoid process the suprascapular notch here okay then we also get is bounded also by the clavicle posterior surface of the clavicle okay so this three bone forms the apex of the apex of the axilla also called cervical axillary canal cervical axillary canal axillary canal so this is the apex of the axilla this is bounded by the superior border of the scapula part of the coracoid process posterior part of the clavicle outer border of the first rib this is another name of it cervical axillary canal directed above and medially towards the root of the neck it is truncated that means cut not conical okay the importance of cervical axillary canal is that the structures from the neck and thorax enters the axilla through the cervical axillary canal suppose the break the break the axillary artery okay is coming out as a continuation of the subclavian artery axillary vein goes up and continues as the subclavian vein okay also the part of the brachial plexus the infraclavicular part of the brachial plexus goes to the axilla through the cervical axillary canal okay so it has a lot of significance we got the apex of the axilla okay once you get the apex then we will go to the go to the base of the axilla okay we got apex now we go to the base base is the formed by the skin superficial fascia and axillary fascia it connect all the all the walls of the axilla okay formed by skin superficial fascia superficial fascia okay and axillary fascia okay we got the formation of base it is concave it is concave skin area is concave okay okay so we got the the base of the axilla it is also related to a cutaneous nerve called intercostal brachial nerve intercostal brachial nerve okay intercostal brachial nerve intercostal brachial nerve what is intercostal brachial nerve this is the lateral cutaneous branch of second intercostal nerve we can say 
lateral cutaneous branch of tissue. So, lateral cutaneous branch of second intercostal nerve. Okay, this nerve is a cutaneous nerve. It actually it comes out through the second intercostal space. It pierces the serratus anterior, go along the base of the axilla, and it pick up sensation from the medial aspect of the arm and the posterior aspect of the arm. It is communicated to the medial cutaneous nerve of the arm. Sometimes it is a little bit bigger than the middle cutaneous nerve of the arm is smaller or middle medial cutaneous nerve of the arm is bigger than intercostal brachial nerve may be smaller okay intercostal brachial nerve may also get contribution from the t3 okay we got that it pick up sensation from the base of the base of the axilla it is also some clinical importance it may carry the cardiac referred pain that is going to the spinal cord through the intercostal brachial nerve okay we got that so we got the intercostal brachial nerve we got the base we got the apex now we'll go to the anterior wall of the axilla so we have anterior wall of the axilla okay so this is the anterior wall okay this is anterior this is posterior wall okay so anterior wall of the axilla is formed by the pectoralis major muscle pectoralis major muscle okay so pectoralis major muscle forms the anterior border plus we have the we have the pectoralis minor pectoralis minor and also subclavius subclavius and these two muscles are ensheathed by the clavi pectoral fascia clavi pectoral fascia so what is my clavi pectoral fascia this is the clavi pectoral fascia it is enclosing what this is the subclavius subclavius what is this this is the pectoralis pectoralis minor what is this this is the pectoralis major so what structures forms the anterior wall of the axilla answer should be pectoralis major pectoralis minor subclavius and also the clavipectoral fascia which two mus muscles are ensheathed by the clavipectoral fascia answer should be subclavius and pectoralis minor they are surrounded by the the clavi pectoral fascia clavi pectoral fascia is also very important to us clavi pectoral fascia is biased by the this fascia is biased by what cephalic vein lateral pectoral nerve lateral pectoral nerve acromiothoracic artery acromiothoracic artery and certainly lymph vessels okay so again what structure forms the anterior wall of the axilla and such should be pectoralis major pectoralis minor clavi pectoral fascia enclosing the subclavius this is the what is this bone this is the clavicle 
clavicle, subclavius is present below the clavicle and on the surface of the clavicle is the pectoralis minor muscle. Okay, so you got the anterior wall. Then we get one important point is that the what is anterior axillary fold. Okay, anterior axillary fold. Okay, the anterior axillary fold is the lower part of the anterior wall of the axilla. It is formed by the pectoralis major muscle. Okay, so it is the lower part of the of the anterior wall of the anterior wall of the axilla formed by the by the pectoralis major muscle pectoralis major muscle okay we got the anterior wall now we go to the posterior wall okay we go to the posterior wall okay let's go to the posterior wall okay posterior wall is formed by again three muscle one is subscapularis then teres major, then latissimus dorsi. One, two, three. So number one is the subscapularis, subscapularis. Then we have the teres major muscle. Then we have the latissimus dorsi. Latissimus dorsi muscle. So three muscle, okay, those are coming to form the posterior wall of the of the axilla. So what forms the posterior axillary fold? Posterior axillary fold. Okay. Posterior axillary fold is formed by the latissimus dorsi and the teres major mass the lower part of the posterior wall okay it is formed by the teres major and latissimus dorsi okay we got the posterior wall we got anterior wall we got apex we got base we got posterior wall now we'll go to the medial wall okay the medial wall of the axilla medial wall okay medial wall medial wall is here is the medial wall okay medial wall is formed by upper four ribs and intercostal muscle intercostal spaces and serratus anterior okay so formed by the upper four ribs okay intercostal muscles those are present between the ribs then serratus anterior muscle the upper part of serratus anterior muscle anterior muscle okay serratus anterior muscle okay we got the medial wall of the of the axilla now we go to the lateral wall okay lateral wall okay lateral wall is formed by what this is actually very narrow space okay lateral wall it is formed here by the bicipital groove of the humerus here it is formed by the bicipital groove of the humerus lateral 
we are going to the lateral wall so it is formed by the upper part of the shaft of the humerus in the region of the intertubercular sulcus or bicipital groove okay so upper part of the shaft of the humerus upper part of the shaft of the humerus of the humerus where at the at the intertubercular sulcus or bicipital groove intertubercular sulcus also called bicipital group okay so that is this part this is the tubercles okay between them we have the bicipital group bicipital group is here okay that forms the the medial that forms the the lateral wall of the not medial lateral wall of the axilla okay what does it contain here we will get the tendon of the long head of biceps bracca with its synovial sheath we get the the proximal part of the short head of biceps bracca and the croco brachialis okay so this part lateral one is related to the long head of biceps bracca head of biceps brachii 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 muscle short head of biceps brachii muscle short head of biceps brachii muscle okay and also the muscle coraco brachialis okay so our answer is it is formed by the intertubercular sulcus or bicipital group and bicipital group has some relationship it has relationship with the it contains actually the long head of the biceps brachii with its synovial sheath goes through that just anterior medial to that we have the short head of the biceps brachii and the coraco brachialis the coraco brachialis and biceps brachii they are coming out of the tip of the coracoid process of the scapula the short head of biceps brachii and the coraco brachialis coming out of the tip of the coracoid process of the scapula okay and also we have to know again this bicipital group here it contains the tendon of the long head of the biceps brachii okay we got the lateral wall we have got gone through the apex base anterior wall medial wall lateral wall okay we got that so to know again this is the apex also called cervical axillary canal the blood the neurovascular bundle is covered or are surrounded by a sheath called axillary sheath like this okay axillary sheath axillary sheath that is surround the blood vessel and the nerve going through the cervical axillary canal or apex of the axilla and that axillary sheath is a is a continuation of the deep cervical fascia the pre vertebral fascia okay we got the walls of the axilla we got the apex we got the base lateral wall medial wall posterior wall of the scapula okay so we got that now we go to the contents of the axilla contents of the axilla contents okay very easy to remember the contents it is axilla so it should contain axillary artery it should contain 
the axillary artery with its branches, the axillary vein with its tributaries. Now it contains the infraclavicular part of the brachial plexus. Okay, it should contain a lot of lymph nodes because it is a junction between the upper extremity and the thorax. At the junction, we always get a lot of uh, lymph nodes in a healthy person. It is, it may be enlarged in case of any type of disease. Okay, we also get a lot of fat here. Adipose tissue will get a lot of areolar tissue. Okay, so let's get the contents. So we must emphasize on <coughs> infraclavicular part of the brachial plexus. Okay, okay, infraclavicular part of the <coughs> Excuse me. Infraclavicular part of the brachial plexus should contain the trunk. Division, okay, will get the 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 divisions. Then we'll get the beginning of formation of the of the cords. Okay. So so the infraclavicular part of the brachial plexus is a content of the axilla. I have one YouTube video, YouTube video on the brachial plexus, also one more YouTube video on the injuries of the brachial plexus. If you have any chance, I will, I will, I wish you will read, uh, we will go through the video what I have produced. Please look at those videos if possible. Okay, let's go there. So contents, infraclavicular part of brachial plexus, we have the axillary artery and its branches okay we have the axillary vein vein and its tributaries okay we got the nerve, artery, vein, okay, we'll get axillary lymph nodes, axillary lymph nodes, maybe around 20, okay, axillary lymph node will get a lot of fat and areolar tissue, areolar connective tissue, areolar tissue, okay, we'll also add the long thoracic nerve will add as a content long thoracic nerve long thoracic nerve long thoracic nerve is an important nerve it is a an important nerve it innervates the serratus anterior it comes out of the roots of the brachial plexus it passes over the serratus anterior so long thoracic nerve is the content of the axilla. If it is paralyzed, then what we get? We we'll get winged scapula. Okay. So we got one nerve, long thoracic nerve, and we also like to include intercostal brachial nerve. Intercostal brachial nerve. We discussed that intercostal brachial nerve is the lateral cutaneous branch of the second intercostal nerve or T2 okay we got the contents of the of the of the axilla okay now we go to the branches of the axillary artery that is very important to us branches of the axillary artery branches of the axillary artery So, axillary artery is a continuation of the subclavian artery from the outer border of the first rib. So, if this is the first rib, where is my first rib? Outer border of the first rib, okay. So, it is an artery that extend extension, to go through the extension, 
outer border of phosphine. to the lower border of lower border to the lower border of teres major muscle of teres major muscle okay is that extension so outer border of the phosphate to lower border of the teres major muscle okay so what are the branches of axillary artery that is very important to us branches of axillary artery very simple so suppose this is the upper part continuation of the of the axillary artery from the subclavian artery this is the teres major muscle so this is the artery here and this artery is divided into three part by the pectoral is major pectoral is minor muscle okay this is the pectoral is minor muscle pectoral is minor remember this pectoral is minor muscle this is the first part this is the second part this is the third part of the axillary artery from first part of the axillary artery we have only one branch this is the superior thoracic artery we get superior thoracic artery okay from the second part we we'll get two artery one is the lateral thoracic artery another is the acromiothoracic artery also called thoracoacromial artery second part we we'll get the lateral thoracic artery okay lateral thoracic artery and also get another is the acromio thoracic artery okay acromio thoracic artery also called thoracoacromial artery okay we got two from the second part that is underneath the pectoral is minor one is medial and another is lateral then we'll get from the third part of the the of the axillary artery three branches one is the subscapular artery subscapular artery subscapular okay subscapular artery there is very important artery subscapular artery gives a branch called circumflex scapular artery that is important artery that is important for the anastomosis around the scapula so from subscapular artery we will get the circumflex scapular artery okay we will go there okay now we have one branch subscapular artery with two branches one is anterior circumflex femoral artery anterior circumflex humeral artery another one is the posterior circumflex humeral artery posterior circumflex humeral artery okay we got that so again summarize axillary artery is an artery that is a continuation of the subclavian artery from the outer border of the first rib up to the lower border of the teres major from lower border of the teres major it becomes the it becomes the axillary artery becomes the brachial artery axillary artery has three division for our learning purpose by the pectoralis minor muscle this is the first part this is first part from first part we have one artery superior thoracic artery this is second part of the axillary artery we have two branches one is the lateral thoracic artery and the one is the thoracoacromial artery or acromiothoracic artery this is the third part of the axillary artery we have three branches one is the 
subscapular artery, another one is the anterior circumflex humeral artery, another one is the posterior circumflex humeral artery. They actually encircle the surgical neck of the humerus. Okay, we got that the branches of axillary artery. Now we we'll go to the tributaries of the axillary vein. Okay. Tributaries of axillary vein. Before going to the tributaries of axillary vein, we have some some clinical significance, clinical notes. You can say notes. Okay, axillary artery is a major artery. Okay, so axillary artery becomes the brachial artery. It continued as axillary artery from the subclavian artery. It may be injured. In that condition, we need to press the axillary artery against the against the humerus, okay? Or we may press just in the mid clavicular region below the clavicle where it begins, okay? So it need to be compressed to suspend hemorrhage, okay? So axillary artery it need to be compressed two places. One, third part, we must compress against the humerus. Beginning, we may compress so that we can control bleeding or hemorrhage. Axillary artery may go aneurysm. Aneurysm, especially first part of the axillary artery. Okay, especially first part. And this is found in case of the pitchers in baseball game. Pitchers of baseball game okay so if there is any region of the first part okay like that there is abnormal dilatation of the axillary artery like that or like that okay then it may compress the brachial plexus in preclavicular part mainly the trunks of the brachial plexus and that may cause some neurological problem in the upper extremity so the aneurysm of the first part of the axillary artery may compress the trunks of the brachial plexus that is possible that may lead to the neurological problem in the upper extremity okay we got that axillary artery now we we'll go to the axillary vein okay how axillary vein is formed axillary vein is formed by the union of the basilic vein okay so basilic vein plus brachial veins okay brachial vein some books say the vena comitentis or accompanying vein of the brachial artery. So those are the brachial vein. We can call it vena comitentis. Comitentis of the brachial artery. Okay. Brachial artery. So they unite basilic vein plus, plus brachial veins unite at the lower border of the teres major and becomes the axillary vein okay axillary vein is a content of the axilla and this vein has the tributaries just like the just like the it has the corresponding tributaries like that of the axillary artery plus it also receives cephalic vein cephalic vein in the upper part of the deltopectoral group at the infraclavicular space here it receives the cephalic vein okay that is so important to us the the axillary vein axillary vein has other importances because it is a big vein any damage to the axillary vein may cause profuse hemorrhage but the Clinical significance of axillary vein is that axillary vein may be used to 
put a catheter to the subclavian vein or to put a central line so axillary vein will go to the subclavian vein then will go to the to the brachiocephalic vein then will go to the superior vena cava going to the right atrium we may go to the right ventricle so to pass a catheter axillary vein is sometimes chosen to go to the subclavian vein okay so there is the importance of axillary vein some with some clinical significance we got that now we'll go to the axillary lymph nodes okay axillary lymph node is very important to us axillary lymph nodes is very important because it's a lymph node are the nodes where the breast cancer cells settle around 75 percent of lymphatic drainage of the breast is carried by the axillary lymph nodes so a, a person a woman has may, may have also breast cancer it is usually a female and a female has a breast cancer so she might have enlarged axillary lymph nodes so what are the groups of axillary lymph nodes we have around 20 nodes they are embedded in the fatty tissue and lose irregular connective tissue okay we have this picture we can remember that okay first of all this is the anterior one anterior lymph nodes anterior also called pectoral lymph nodes okay they pick up the lymph from the upper outer quadrant of the breast upper part of the abdomen and thorax okay so and also the axillary tail of the breast okay so we, we may add axillary tail of the breast as a content of the axilla okay in female in adult female okay so the anterior pectoral group of lymph nodes pick up lymphatics from the breast and we must know all, almost all lymphatics of the breast again more chance to get breast cancer in the upper and outer quadrant of the breast okay i have one youtube video on breast anatomy so if you have any chance please uh, go through both the brachial plexus and the anatomy of the memory gland or breast okay so anterior or pectoral lymph node this that is that that is anterior if you put one this is one this is not only one lymph node we may have multiple lymph node here okay group of lymph node maybe three to five lymph node here okay then we have the posterior lymph nodes also called subscapular lymph node subscapular lymph nodes okay again subscapular we may have six to seven lymph nodes they're associated here this is number two here the subscapular again multiple lymph node not one this is the location usual location and we have the lateral lymph node posterior subscapular lymph node pick up lymph from the posterior part of the thorax and upper part of the abdomen okay posterior, posterior aspect and also from the axillary tail of the breast okay so we got posterior then we have the humeral or lateral this is the this is the lateral or humeral group of lymph node lateral okay it pick up the lymph from the upper extremity okay we go to the lateral lymph nodes okay lateral group of lymph nodes or humeral lymph nodes okay it pick up almost all the lymph from the upper extremity except some lymphatics follow the cephalic vein okay that will go to the to the central lymph nodes okay this is central number four this is central lymph nodes lymph 
nodes. Okay, so the central lymph node is located a bit up in the in the axilla. Okay, the central lymph node. Then we go again. It is not only one; it is a group of lymph nodes. It pick up lymph from the lateral, from the anterior, from the posterior, going to the central lymph node. Then we go a bit up. We go to the apical lymph nodes. Okay, apical. That is number five here. Apical lymph node. Apical lymph nodes. Okay, nodes. Okay. We got apical lymph nodes that is located at the apex. Then from the apical lymph node, we'll go to the to the sub to the supraclavicular lymph nodes. Go to the supraclavicular lymph nodes. Supraclavicular polar lymph nodes. Okay. That is number six here. From supraclavicular lymph node, lymph will go, go through the subclavian trunk. You go to the subclavian trunk to the venous angle. Venous angle. What is venous angle? Venous angle is the angle between the internal jugular vein and subclavian vein. So it may go directly there, or it may be another route is that it may go from the right side to the right lymphatic duct, 